Bear Down Bears fans, welcome into another edition of the Chicago Bears Breeze. Question on the table today, has Matt Eberflus already lost the locker room? Let's talk about it starting now. Now, if you are new to the channel, please like the video. Please subscribe to the page. We do talk Chicago Bears daily on this channel. Only channel talk Chicago Bears. How Chicago Bears fans talk. So make sure that you get in tune with us, man. Of course, brought to you by the Windy City Breeze that we do daily sports talk over there as well, Monday through Friday. So stay tuned in with us over there as well. Question on the table. Has Matt Eberflus lost this locker room? We are three weeks into the season. The Chicago Bears are 0-3. And I think there is... There's two ways to look at this, right? I don't know per se if he's lost the locker room to the point where guys are going to start turning on each other and you're going to see finger pointing and all of that. I don't believe that the Chicago Bears are there yet. I think at the end of the game, when you see uh, Justin Fields going through with all of his teammates saying we're going to get it together, blah, 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 after getting absolutely eviscerated by the, uh, the, the, the Kansas City Chiefs, I do believe that... You know, there's still some togetherness with the locker room. But I look at, and I said this on the post-post game show on ESPN. I look at the defense. And I see a defense that doesn't exhibit any of the principles that this entire thing is stood on. And that means that you're not getting through to your players, right? That's one thing to say, right? Listen, the DB room gets eviscerated in that game, right? There's a bunch of people who weren't able to go, bunch of injuries on the team, bunch of pieces go down and Tremaine, we lose Tremaine Edmonds, right? And all of a sudden it's like, okay, maybe we can't win this game with the defense that we currently have out on the field. But you still had a defense that didn't exhibit any hustle, any intensity, and he, I mean, you, you did finally get uh, find a way to get some takeaways there, but it was too little too late at that point. And just it, it feels like it's not all together. And so when I look at the side of the football that you're supposed to be that kind of a coach, right? Again, Matt Eberflus, a defensive minded coach, a defensive coordinator. He's calling the plays. When I look at that defense and I see a defense that isn't exhibiting any of those traits, that your standards are built upon, I do question how much of your message is getting through. And to me, that is a portion of the locker room that may be lost. There may not be a belief in what Matty Refluz can do. That does not mean that they don't think that Matty Refluz is a good guy and they don't feel, uh, uh, they don't mind playing for him and they don't mind going out there and, and you know, and following his lead at this point in, in, in the rebuild, right? But it doesn't mean that they think that he's going to be the end all be all answer when it's all said and done with it and I think that that's the part that is a major question mark with this Bears team to me I look at a team that we've seen through three weeks that seemed like they could not be bothered to go out there and play a decent game of football and maybe it feels like some things are moving in the right direction but there's too many things that feel like they're moving in the opposite direction and you're just not seeing listen if your team isn't built on or isn't playing with the principles that you came in basically saying this is what this entire thing is going to be built around then I do have to question the leadership that's in the building I do have to question whether this locker room is starting to go the other way I do want to know how you guys feel. Let me know in the comments below. I'll be down to talk with you guys as well. Do you feel like Matt Eberflus has lost the locker room at this point? And realistically, on the flip side of this, right, is there a point where he can get it back? And I think that that's the part where it takes time for guys to buy in. It does, right? And I think that you had a bunch of guys last season when you look at the field. They were dudes that were fighting for their lives. Most of those guys are not in the NFL right now. Right, They were fighting to stay on the team. They were fighting for their jobs. And so because of that, guess what? I think you end up seeing a lot more of the uh, 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 hits principles being ex uh, uh, um, put on display on tape uh, more consistently. But 
You don't have that this season. You have guys that know that they're good. TJ Edwards, Tremaine Edmonds, they know that they are established players in this league. DJ Moore, of course, knows he's an established player in this league. And so you have to find a different way to get through to these guys. You have to find a different way to start putting the pieces together. It's not saying that I don't believe that Matt Eberflus can all of a sudden find a way to get guys back on board with his mindset, his thought process, what he has, uh, 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 what his principles are, right? But you have to start doing that to me with the S that is in the word at the end of the game. And that's just smart. Stop trying to play your system and force your system to work in situations that it's not going to work versus adapting your system to the talent that you currently have on the field. And I think that that's what Justin Fields was talking about. I think that's what a lot of this week is going to be when we talk about offensive and defensive game plan. It's going to be trying to make your system fit what these guys want to do, what these guys want to go out there and make happen. I think that's the Bears best bet to getting this locker room all back together again I don't think that this is a situation where guys hate each other I don't think this is a situation where guys hate the head coach I think that they it's like a Scott Skiles situation right like this guy's good enough to get us to this point now what is this point this point is basically like listen we we all show up we do our job we go home that's where Flus is at right now. It doesn't mean that the job is done well. It doesn't mean that the job is done elite. It, elite. it just means that there's a job being done. That's what basically all we're seeing from the Chicago Bears right now. But for me with Flus, listen, if you're going to get these guys back on board, what his principles are aren't bad, but you have to get at least one of these lead guys, one of these main guys to buy into it. And I don't know how in the world he's going to do that, especially starting off three. And I'll tell you what, it helps when you start off with a win. Maybe that's all this Bears team needs to get to start moving in the right direction. I asked J-Mac on the post post game show as well. How much of learning to win is important. We always hear about that, right? You got to go out there and you got to learn how to win. This Bears team does have to learn how to win, but I think there's also just moments where you have to go out there and just play play a game, of, a brand of football that is respectable. How much of it is just going out there with a want to? How much of it is just going out there with, with a little heart, with a little fight in it? That's the main thing that I want to take away from this Bears team moving forward. That's the thing I want to continue to see being put on display. The hustle part of this, the intensity part of this, because I listen, Chicago will put up with a lot. If you're trying, if it looks like you're actually out there trying hard, if it looks like you're actually out there giving it your all, we will deal with it. We'll be like, listen, they weren't talented enough. That sucks. We'll criticize the plays. We'll criticize the moments that need to be criticized. But we're not going to sit out here and go, man, well, at least they, at least they, you know, didn't give, at least, I mean, they gave effort, but, you know, it's not enough. We'll sit there. We'll be like, okay, yeah, the effort was there. But, you know, we need to see we need to see more on the talent side. Now we can look at other things. It looks like you have a team that doesn't feel bothered enough to go out there and have to play football on Sundays. Like it's not their job to do it. And I think that that's the part and the games that we've seen that has really been the most disheartening and really has us feeling, especially coming into this week versus the Denver Broncos. Like we're not the better team versus what Denver is putting on display. Like we're not the better team versus a team that just got 70 put on its head top. That is crazy to me. Uh, I do want to know how you guys feel. Like I said, in the comments below, I'll be down there talking with you as well. As always, man, it's your boy Path the Designer back at it again. Make sure you guys stay tuned over here on the Chicago Bear Breeze for all our Chicago Bears content and tune in with us over on the Windy City Breeze as well as we'll be breaking down this more in depth today on the Daily Show. Me and P-Kid. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. It's going to be a long season. Peace.